Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Skift Podcast, Skift's weekly conversations on the trend lines shaping global travel. This podcast is sponsored by MasterCard, one of the world's leading technology companies. MasterCard and Skift have recently announced Future Cities, an exploration of how major destinations are preparing for the new age of urban mobility. From connected infrastructure to smart technologies, this upcoming series examines how global cities are creating seamless and personalized experiences for visitors and residents. Learn more about the project at futurecities.skift.com and join the conversation on Twitter using hashtag SkiftFutureCities. I'm Jason Clampett, and this week I'm joined by Skift founder Rafat Ali. The power of film and video to shape our perceptions of a place are rarely surpassed, except by actually experiencing that place in person. And with YouTube, Vimeo, GoPro, and hundreds of channels in high definition, the choices of what to watch and how we watch them are greater than ever. The traditional travelogue isn't dead, but how we see it has radically changed. And what we expect to see as viewers continually challenges media brands to rethink how they distribute their programs how viewers discover them, and the devices they watch them on. To better understand what we see and why we're seeing it, we're speaking today with Ross Babbitt, the SVP of programming at Travel Channel, the 28-year-old cable giant that's evolved into a multi-platform video brand that also shares content on the web and through its apps. We're also joined by Betsy Sanner Ayala, the VP of programming and production at Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. PTA is a digital travel channel founded in 2014 that can be seen on demand on Roku and Amazon, as well as on the web, and if you're lucky, on Delta in-flight entertainment. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having having us. us. Um, Betsy, when when you guys picture your ideal viewer, how is he or she discovering the content and where are they viewing it? So just to give a little background, I think that probably helps if people haven't heard of PTA. Uh, PTA is short for Planes, Trains, Automobiles. Um, We are bullish in the streaming TV um, sector, and we are found, um, we're the top travel channel on Roku. We're on Amazon Fire. We're part of Delta InFlight, their studio, as well as Sonify, which is in hotel rooms. So um, we are, and we're also on Clear TV. So we're in airports. So you can view them while you're waiting for your flight. So our viewers are discovering us um, while they're traveling. So while it's top of mind, they're able to see our content. We also have our dot-com presence as well. So a lot of the discovery is, you know, we get more people saying that they've seen us on Delta and in their hotel rooms than anything else. So um, that's where most of our discovery comes from. And, And Ross, you know, with a traditional cable channel behind you, right. uh, the viewership is slightly different, but I, I assume that you're thinking of that viewer on the go as well. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, we really do kind of consider ourselves the, the leader in multi-platform travel video. Certainly the linear channel is the uh, primary focus for us. Been around for you know 28 years, uh, fully distributed around the country. Um, we're doing 450 hours a year for the linear channel. And a lot of what we've been doing in the last five, seven years is to take a lot of uh, what we've learned on the linear side and try to apply it to platforms where we know the younger viewers are, are looking to see content. So whether it's travelchannel.com or um, our apps, the Travel Channel Cities app or the Watch Travel Channel app, um, our association with You Live, which is owned by Scripps, you know, we're really about getting our, our video assets out to, to people where they want to see them. Um, the linear channel for now, and I think for a while is going to be the focus. Um, you know, it's more mature obviously, and, and, um, the ad sales dollars are there, but we're very much in the game of making sure that our content can be, can be watched and monetized on all the other platforms too. As you're looking, this is Rafat, as you're looking at, um, the consumer life cycle, inspiration, research, booking part of the trip. Where do you think travel video as it stands 2015 today is in that funnel? Top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, or uh, travel video depends on what type of travel video it is and what format it is and where they're viewing it. I would say that, meaning it's for us, 
a travel channel very much dependent on the platform. Um, we feel that when our viewers are consuming our content in a nonlinear way, um, we can super serve them in a more of a long tail way and give them really kind of utility um, content that they can find um, if they're booking a trip, for instance, and are going to say, you know, San Francisco, they can go to our website or they can go to our Travel Channel Cities app and search for San Francisco content find original video, but also find video that's associated with the shows on our linear channel that will super serve just San Francisco for their, for their trip. Right. But for our linear channel, which is, you know, nationally distributed, um, and we are, you know, uh, advertiser supported and we have to have, um, an entertainment component to what we do. Um, if we go to utility, it, it, we just don't get the ratings that we need. Um, it needs to feel broad enough to appeal to an audience that cares about travel and is inspired by travel, but isn't necessarily literally coming to the channel to find out tips on how to travel, where to travel, how to pack, those kind of things. Um, so that's the trick. We, we really own the travel content 24-7 um, on our linear channel, but it has to be um, more than just utility. It has to feel entertaining as well. And I can talk more about that how we do that, um, certainly through our talent and our formats and th ways that we try to make it entertaining. Yeah, and I would say, you know, for us, um, the beautiful part about being on Roku and Amazon Fire, and I think that's the best way to watch what PTA does, is that you have that option as a linear channel, but then you also have VOD options. So we do it much the similar way in the sense that when you're looking for a location, um, that's what we want to highlight. Um, and we can either, you can either have that lean back experience or a lean forward experience and sample some of our shorter form content that's both in, well, we'll be launching on our Roku and Amazon Fire, but also on our digital and online platforms. Uh, you've taken a very deliberate strategy, Betsy, on creating these scripted short programs, which if you look at historically the digital players in travel video, they've sort of been on the destination video, hey, here's a video about San Francisco, for example, versus the scripted video. How are you thinking about scripted video in short form? Because that's the big challenge. Because unlike Travel Channel, they're, you know, half an hour shows, maybe more, versus very short three to five minutes. Well, just, um, I think to clarify, we actually put a lot of um, time and effort into our half hour shows. That's usually, that's most of our programming is longer form. And we've done that for a de very deliberate reason. Um, because we we don't think that TV is dying. Um, in fact, people want that Thank lean God. back experience when they're watching, um, especially on their TVs. Um, we're TV everywhere, so you can have that lean back experience, but you can also be more engaged and be on your on your desktop. So our shorter form, we have specified um, four locations. We have a series called Eat, Play, Stay, which is exactly what it's it is. It's we focused on five different cities, both international and domestic, and it we highlight the places that we think you would want to eat, play, and stay. We have a very distinct POV. Um, you know, we're really targeting those passionate curious travelers um, who are traveling either for business or for pleasure, you know, a lot. You know, with, with digital channels now, you have greater insight to usage patterns and, and, um, and other data about yeah. how your stuff is consumed more so than, you know, Nielsen numbers, you know, 15 years ago. How does that, how does all of that data help you make programming decisions? It's a very interesting question. I do think that um, Nielsen has some work to do to catch up on measurement um, in the nonlinear platforms, for sure. Dare I say, even on the linear side, probably has a little work to do. Um, we do get a lot of great data, though, through our, our nonlinear uh, platforms that can help um, curate ideas that can then serve all the platform. So for instance, I get a list once a month of the top keywords that people are searching for on our website. That creates some ideas for us. What are people looking for? Let's make sure we're serving them on all platforms. Um, certainly, you know, when it comes to further developing tc.com or the Travel Channel Cities app, um, if we're seeing the kind of data that people are interested in more in San Francisco versus another city, we're going to make sure we're, we're creating more content for that, for that city. Um, 
I frankly wish we could see the, the level of data on our linear side that we see in our digital side, because sort of make it kind of easier to, to really super serve our viewers. Um, but I think we're gonna catch up as an industry, I hope. I think for us, um, we're still learning, um, to be honest, like we're still trying to figure out and um, we're working on our analytics and the, and the people that are watching us because we're on new platforms. Um, we don't have as much of a luxury of actually knowing. We can, we will know more on our dot com, um, but we just relaunched that. So we're so infant that it's hard to say exactly who's watching us and what they want. Um, but we'll be very excited. You, you know, have the mercy to some extent of you know the distributors giving you the right data. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's one of the big challenges in the digital video area where you're at the mercy of YouTube, Facebook, or Roku or Amazon on what type of data they'll give you and how do you then put it together in a coherent fashion to create strategy out of it? I will say for us, what's interesting is that we've seen that um, when we distribute our video, short form video through our channels, um, we certainly get a lot of data, but we also distribute through you know AOL, Facebook and those kind of things. And you can see the traffic just kind of multiply whenever our video goes out to those channels. Um, and I don't know, more and more in the last year, I think we're finding that we're having much more um, success reaching a broader audience by going to alternative distribution platforms outside of our universe. Um, and I think, and you're probably seeing this too, you know, uh, it's called follow the money. Um, the, the advertising community is still catching up to what's happening in digital um, and figuring out ways to, to, to monetize the content in a way that's palatable to a viewer. Yep. Uh, the 30 second spot on air is everybody's used to that. Um, a 30 second pre-roll, not so much. Yeah. And so I think the ad community is trying to figure out exactly how to, how to, how to uh, get their message out as well. Yeah. And you've done, I think, Travel Channel. I know PTA has done very creative integrations with sponsors uh, as opposed to doing a traditional ad. Talk about that. Yeah. So we, you know, are, we're definitely a brand advertising model. But what we've done is we're really creative in terms of how to get the brand integrated into our programming. So they get to become part of the story that we're telling. Um, so we work closely with the brands when they find a show that they want to align with. Um, and we work with them from the creative aspect until we can integrate them fully. But we also do the old um, the ad buy model as well because we do function as a linear channel on multiple um, platforms. So. But it's been a lot of fun, to be honest. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun to be that creative and figure out um, what makes brands happy and us be, still stay true to who we are and tell the stories we want to tell. What particular challenges does travel present in terms of um, capturing it that you don't see with food or home? You know, those are, those are two, you know, HGTV and Food Network are sister channels of Travel Channel. Um, and they in probably starting with Food Network, first figured out, okay, this is it. And they started hitting all the notes. A few years later, HGTV was like, okay, we finally got it. <laughs> we finally cracked the nut. Um, you know, when, when do you think we're going to crack the nut with, with travel? Yeah, I, 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 mean, I think we're in that process now. Um, to back up, I've been at Scripps for 12 years, and I started at DIY Network, then at HGTV, and then and now here at, at Travel Channel. Um, and... Uh, Absolutely. HGTV kind of figured out the formula of being a super servant audience that cares about home, but also be entertaining enough to drive ratings. Um, back when I started at DIY Network, we, 12 years ago, we did, we did shows about scrapbooking. We did shows about knitting. We, found, we, we had that kind of broad approach to everything DIY. And then over time, we slowly kind of honed in on what people wanted, which was just entertaining home improvement television. Um, I think that's what where travel kind of is right now for us. Um, travels, travel channel has been around for 28 years, but only with scripts for five. Uh, and we are trying to super serve a travel audience much the same way HGTV really owns home and, and Food Network really owns food. For us, it's about entertaining stories around the world from the comfort of your couch and finding talent that can curate those stories that you want to go on that ride with. Um, what I always say is, we're going to get the we're going to get the hardcore travelers watching our programming, 
but we need more than those. We need the people that maybe don't have as much time or as much money as they would like to travel as much as they want. Their our median age is in the mid 40s. They're busy. They have kids. They're working. Um, we want to take them on a kind of vicarious armchair traveling trip um, by watching our programming. So whether it's Andrew Zimmerman with Bizarre Foods or Jack Maxwell with Booze Traveler or uh, Don Wildman and Mysteries of the Museum, they want to be entertained by 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 guides, by docents that can take them around the world virtually. Um, I think that's, that's the key and that's our sweet spot. Um, and I would say in the last couple of years, we're really trying to hone that even further and find more of those kind of talent to do those entertaining kind of travelogues and, and ways to see the world in different ways. Mm-hmm. The importance of talent, and you're, you gave some examples of it, um, Anthony Bourdain used to be on Travel Channel. Um, as you're traveling, telling travel stories, how important is talent as part of it? Because historically, that's not how travel video has been done. Mm-hmm. Uh, until Travel Channel started doing it, Bourdain became a star and, and, and that happened. And you've, uh, as a, historically, you've gone back and forth on the talent part of, and, and, and now it seems like you're coming back to it. Yeah. I, um, and again, I think it's the secret sauce of scripts when you look at HGTV and Food Network as well. You know, it's about curating those stars. Um, people like to watch, you know, celebrities and we're trying to create celebrities in the travel world, just like food and HGTV have done in their worlds. Uh, and you think about it, you know, we, all of our talent are people that you kind of want to hang out with, that you would like to go on a trip with if you could, you know, um, walk the streets of Amsterdam and have a beer with, um, so the more we can find those entertaining yet accessible, relatable guy next door, girl next door kind of talent who are smart about the world, curious about the world, and you just want to hang out with on, on television. Um, it, you know, history has shown that, viewer, that viewers like that and ratings go up, so. And for PTA, you know, we're really focused on, obviously, talent drives your programming, um, but we're really focused on experts, um, whether they're experts um, in the travel industry or they're experts in their own realm, but they travel a lot organically. So that's what our our focus is right now and finding those, you know, just like Ross said, those great characters that you want to attach yourself to and let them tell you the story that they're going on. Let's talk a little bit about competition. Um, not between Fun. the two of you guys, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but traditionally it was other channels, uh, for, for travel channel or, or um, uh, but now it's not even other travel brands. It's GoPro, it's Red Bull creating content. Um, you know, and they're in a way stealing viewers you might otherwise have. H- how have these tra- kind of non-traditional brands made you rethink strategy? You know, for us, we we probably see them more as op- uh, partnership opportunities than anything else because they're doing the same thing we are. They don't have to adhere to the um, 24-7 network. You know, we're all just creating great content and we're creating content that viewers in our niche really want to watch. Um, so it's, it's interesting to watch all those brands create content. Um, but I don't know if it's necessarily a competition. I think it's more an opportunity for partnerships with us. Yeah, I'd say the same. We, you know, we talk to those guys to see if there's ways that we can creatively work together on, on, on some projects. Uh, nothing I can ask right now, but we're, we're, we're always talking. Um, but I just generally think the more other brands are elevating the, um, the travel category, and it, it helps all of us, you know? Um, GoPro is, um, is making travel video entertaining and exciting. And so it, it, it creates an excitement for viewers that creates a thirst where, you know, all boats rise. And as a network where we consider ourselves the, the leader in travel video, other folks dabble in it. We do it 24 seven. If people get more entertained and more interested in travel content, um, we feel like we benefit from that. Um, and by the way, you know, GoPros are in a lot of our shows now. It's a, just a great yeah. way to capture content. Yeah, so absolutely. As you're thinking about creating video, a lot of the brands outside of travel are thinking about virality, being able to share on Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, 20 other platforms, Twitter and others. Snapchat these days, obviously a big part of it. Um, How much of your programming strategy is about 
creating a hit show versus creating virality. I mean, especially in a travel channel's linear context, PTA is probably more creative license that way to think both ways. I know for, for us, um, it's really been an emphasis in the last year, especially. I want to give a, a little shout out to uh, our head of marketing, uh, Bob Madden, who came over from Food Network. Um, and he was the head of digital at Food Network and really built their social strategy over there. Um, and it's, it's phenomenal. And he's bringing a lot of the, uh, the, the, the kind of tricks and tips and techniques from, from there over to, to travel. And it really is about great content. Um, if you just try to hit people with tune in messages, it's not going to, nobody's passing that around, but if you hit them with great content, um, that's sticky and that does relate back to the shows on the linear channel, you certainly see, uh, you certainly see that virality you're talking about. So we've been in the last year, um, uh, made a big emphasis to create shoulder content for our linear shows that can go onto the social platforms and get and get passed around. And just in the last six months, we've gained a half a million followers uh, um, by doing that. So I think it's really important. And certainly to reach the younger viewer, you have to be in that game. Yeah. And, you know, for us, you know, social strategy is obviously huge um, because that's how we build awareness and that's how we get people to trust us because we're building a brand, not just uh, travel content at this point. So, um, you know, so we're 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 making um, all our programming in different lengths. We're 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 creating the half hour shows, but we're also working on 12, 15 minute uh, formats as well as doing specific short form that's shareable um, that we think are is content that people want to share and it's very deliberately made for that specific reason. Uh, one of the challenges in travel video and I talked to Shannon, your CEO a while ago, is the the push and pull of creating familiar content on on, on places where people go a lot, Disney or uh, these big iconic places versus creating aspirational video where people go, where, where people may not go, but just dream of going in as a once in a lifetime type of thing. As you're thinking about travel video and the mix between um, different types of video, how much of it is let's create content about things everybody knows about and we'll go tomorrow versus where they'll never go, but they really want to look at it. I think we have to have a mix of both, certainly. Um, and as we talked about earlier, I think the platform dictates some of that. Um, if you go to our website, uh, you'll get really rich, deep content about uh, the familiar places and the unfamiliar places. We have seen that on the linear channel, uh, our viewers like to see um, deep content about places they don't know as much about. The off the, we talk about the off the beaten path kind of places. Um, <laughs> Our viewers are smart. Our viewers have have traveled. Our viewers, you know, know a lot about the kind of common tourist attraction kind of places. Um, they want to learn that little thing that nobody else knows, really, so they can share it with their friends and and sound smart, right? Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, I, I saw this thing on Travel Channel last night. Did you hear about the such and such town or such and such place? Um, we've just seen over time. Again, looking at ratings, that uh, the off the beaten path works a little better for us. Um, but on our website, we go very rich into you know the ins and outs of Disney World and those kind of things. Yeah, I say our strategy is very specific in the fact that we are hitting those off the beaten paths. And I wouldn't even say that. I say we go to cities that people travel to all the time, like Miami, but we're finding those little things that only the locals know. Um, and that's, you know, that's our true focus. We want to create a travel experience for those who have traveled a lot and they want to have a different experience the next time they go. Or, um, but we're also going to unique places and um, uh, developing, you know, new experiences. We are, we're releasing a new show called Foreign in the USA, where you can have that foreign experience in cities in your own backyard in the US because there's such a rich tradition in these really eclectic, cool um, cities in, and communities within the US um, where you can have that abroad experience. So we're looking at cities a little differently than I would say than the, um, than the mass a traveler. Mm -hmm. Cities versus remote destinations in terms of videos, just your quick 
um, what what does better, cities videos and travel, or or videos about like I don't know resorts or islands or beaches? Hmm. It's really a mix of both. Um, islands, beaches, places to get away, places to escape to, definitely do well. Um, and also, I'd say the mid-level cities. You know, we certainly have lots of content about New York, San Francisco, Boston, Chicago, et cetera. But it's the Charleston's, Savannahs. Uh, you know, those kind of mid-level cities that people seem to gravitate toward. Um, and again, for our website, we go broad and deep for our linear channel. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's more of the off the beaten path. Um, I am seeing a trend though of, of kind of that aspirational beach and island kind of programming. Um, that there's just that virtual sense of wanting to get away is something that we're, we're leaning into right now. Yeah, for us, I think we're still, you know, they have the, um, uh, history. Yeah. The history of being able to see how viewers change, viewing habits have changed and they can really watch that. I think we're still learning what our viewers are and what they want to do. But, um, you know, what we're doing so far, I think they're excited about and we've gotten great responses. So we'll, we'll continue to do so. I do have one thing that I was going to say, the, what we have found from our Delta Airlines, from our in-flight studio, um, being part of that, you have a, a very, um, you know, in-tuned audience that is watching. And they tend to select things more city-based than um, and location-based, um, which we have found very interesting. Ross, when Travel Channel launched nearly three decades ago, it was launched by TWA. Right. They wanted to inspire people so they could sell them a bunch of tickets. <laughs> that was the mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. the mission, sell more tickets. Yep. Uh, what's what's the mission of Travel Channel today? Oh boy. Well the mission is really to uh, super serve a um, endemic advertising community uh, um, with an audience that cares about travel. Um, you know, our, again, this is a scripts kind of staple. Um, instead of trying to be everything to everybody, um, our friends on the advertising side in our in our building um, want to completely own um, the endemic advertisers for our space and and uh, and get a premium because our uh, because of that. Um, to do that, we need to create travel video that's entertaining and that we're going to get viewers to watch. So certainly ratings play a big part of what we have to do, um, but not just raw ratings, but a, we talk about a quality rating, a, a rating that's slightly upscale than the rest of cable, um, you know, that they have the money to spend um, and that really cares about, about travel. Again, whether they literally do it or not, they're just, they, they, they're interested in the space. Um, and if we can kind of super serve that audience, our, our advertising friends can, um, can reach them more effectively and we can frankly, charge a little bit more money for that. Yeah. So for us, you know, we are focused, like I mentioned before, we're focused on creating a brand. So we are pure travel. We're focused on culture and lifestyle in that travel world. Um, we're really trying to focus on that more, I would say we're not luxury, but we're probably hitting that more affluent audience that travels and they have have the extra money to have an experience they're traveling for experiences they're also traveling for work but they're traveling for experiences so that's really what our focus is right now is is really honing in on on those people it's funny we talk about um kind of our target audience are experience collectors you know it's like people who are interested in doing new things um new experiences seeing things they've never seen before um so they can share it with their friends and kind of talk about their experiences, you know, I'd imagine, you know, I imagine all viewers having a scrapbook filled with things that they've done, and, um, whether it's around the world or around the block. I really hope they don't have a scrapbook. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have learned to make that scrapbook on DIY. That's right. 10 years that's right. Ago. You can find that on that website for sure. <laughs> well, so as you're looking into 2015 and 2016, what new projects are you working on? A couple of things I wanted to, to mention. One is, because uh, we just announced this yesterday, is uh, our partnership with the New York Times in 36 Hours, oh, wow. their column. Um, very popular column for years in the Times. And um, we worked out a, a partnership in which we kind of bring that to life on television um, as we were talking about. Um, and that's uh, going to be a weekly show? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Time to uh, the column. So the premiere is in August and it's uh, 
it happens to be Berlin. And so on that Sunday, you'll see um, the 36 Hours column tied to Berlin. And then when the show premieres, we'll do, you know, a deep dive into Berlin. So uh, like we're talking about a deep dive into cities and seeing things off the beaten path. Um, our, our, our hope is that with the help of the New York Times, we're able to do that, you know, in a, in a nice um, nice way. The other thing I was going to mention is with you guys, we're doing a microsite um, starting Labor Day where we're taking a lot of our content and curating it for um, for your audience. So we're excited to get that off the ground as well. We're excited to be working with you. Yeah, we, um, we are working on a we're working on a lot right now, and obviously our focus is distribution. But we also have an exciting partnership that will be announced soon with. Uh, a very prominent travel magazine. So um, we're really excited about that partnership. Well, Ross and Betsy, we want to thank you for coming by today uh, and discussing video with us. It was great to have you here. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.